Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Critical Conversations, where we talk about hot topic issues related to American Muslims and other targeted communities. Today, we're going to talk about the upcoming fourth annual Women's March that is scheduled to take place on Saturday, January 18th. And there'll be a march in Washington, D.C. and all across the country. But today, we're going to focus our discussion on our local march right here in the Pioneer Valley. And we are so excited and fortunate to be joined by two key organizers of that march. We have Yolanda Kansal and Rachel Myrie. Yolanda is the founder of Springfield Women Organize and is also a former candidate for mayor in Springfield. And Rachel is the coordinator of the Pioneer Valley Women's March and is a newly elected city councillor in Northampton. Thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you. So Rachel, let me begin with you. This is going to be our fourth year marching and that's very exciting. However, there are a few people who feel, you know, what does marching really achieve? You know, we live in a very activist community and people do a lot of the hard work, everyday social justice work through advocacy and movement building and education. So some people contend, you know, well, what is marching going to do? Why do we go out and march in this cold, frigid weather? So how would you yeah. respond to that? Yeah, so I, I think it's not really either or. It's all part of a picture of modeling what democracy looks like. Mm -hmm. um, and one component of democracy is um, showing up and getting in the streets. And I, it, I think it feeds uh, the marchers, um, but it also models to bystanders that this is one thing we can do. And frankly, I think it's good if we learn how to mobilize pretty quickly in this current administration. Um, and you know, there's, especially since the advent of social media, this ubiquitous pressure that can happen mm -hmm. uh, through uh, especially sister marches, which this is, uh, there's sister marches all over the world, uh, is very powerful. And um, so I think it brings us all together in a, in, and shows uh, the power of people. Uh, and hopefully those in power will not forget that. Very <laughs> true, very true. Excellent. So Yolanda, why is this important for you? Why do you march? I think it's important for me as um, a mom of five and a grandmother of seven and being a multiracial, lesbian, queer. Um, you know, to me it means so much because me as myself, I am diverse within me. And I think that it's just so important, especially happening in Springfield, because, you know, we've only had one woman mayor since Springfield has ever been founded. Wow. So it's, and I see politics all around, including our local presidential election, that it seems as if, you know, once a woman starts to run, people don't realize how hard it is. We, we, we start being put in a box and be called names, or then they're trying to find different things. It's hard to be, a, you know, a candidate, not just a woman, being in, a, in what they consider a man's world. It's just, it's just not one thing. It's all these things that we have to bring together as a woman for us to fight for. And we should do it in solidarity and we should do it together. That's why it's so important. Absolutely. And, you know, and I think we see some of that sort of misogyny and, you know, sort of play out in the national mm -hmm. arena as well with like, you know, presidential candidates that they're, you know, the, the, the females in the arena are sort of experiencing what you experienced here locally when you ran for mayor. So it's very important, yes, that we sort of do that and sort of come together. And also I feel to really, you know, reconnect with one another right at the beginning of the year to just to be able to sort of set that intention that, yes, we're here from very different backgrounds different experiences but then to be able to recommit to one another in the public space it just provides such a powerful moving force and so we're very grateful for both of you for all the work that you've put in trying to put this march together um, and you know Rachel you've been sort of coordinating this for the past four years and every year we've had a wonderful turnout and but the march has always taken place in Northampton yeah. and despite the large turnout that we've had this time you've decided and all of you have decided to hold the march in Springfield could you tell us a little bit more about why that happened and why was that shift in venue yeah so um, I think all movements to stay not not stagnant to stay fresh really need to evolve and be timely uh, and so 
we, I think connecting with our larger uh, region mm -hmm. um, is very powerful. I, yeah. The current administration and the historic forces behind the current administration would love for us to stay contained and divided and isolated and predictable. And so we, by reaching out um, across our valley, we're modeling um, the antidote to division. Um, and, um, and the process itself is transformative, whether we even ha have a march. We've been spending, what, six months uh, getting to know each other and learning to work together. And you know, when we put the feelers out, we didn't, uh, coming from Northampton, we didn't want to have a colonizing, we didn't want to uh, affect, we didn't want to assume um, folks in the Springfield area wanted to march, but we, um, we found that we had so much in common and so many goals in common. And the Springfield community is, um, you know, d disproportionately impacted by a, a lot of the policies that we are protesting uh, in terms of um, affecting lower income um, communities and communities of color. So we need to show up not in a benevolent way for Northampton, but really as a, with the idea that our liberation is bound in one another. Absolutely. And Yolanda, you've lived in Springfield since 2005. You know the city really well. Um, you also ran for mayor last year. Why is it so important that this march take place in Springfield? I think it's, a, it's so important because what we, what I, when I founded Springfield Women's Organized and when we first did our own march in March 8th, 2015, mm -hmm. what I seen was it was hard for white women, Latina women, and black women to talk to each other and not taking it personal. So it was almost mm. like this me playing mediator between uh, the white organizers and the Latina organizers. And it's almost like, okay, because a multiracial doesn't mean I understand everyone. <laughs> right. But it was almost like it was great because at the end, we started to realize that we have to learn to speak to each other. Even as women, there was sort of like a divide that was happening. And then- Along racial lines. Yeah, around racial lines and about how do we talk to each other? We're all women. So, and we all go through these same things, um, if not differently, but we're still going through certain struggles together. And so it was great to know that, hey, this black woman is able to basically have this white woman understand what she's going through and this white woman saying, okay, maybe I do have some sort of white privilege that I didn't realize that I could mirror with my uh, white privilege counterpart as a male. And so I, everything coming together and then, you know, we have like this, um, people feel like, oh, you know, Northampton thinks a little differently. The women in Northampton think a different thing. And by all of us coming together, it was just like, we're not so different after all. Like we all were able to like work with each other and come to this common ground. And we've all just had so much fun doing this yeah. march together that it was just like, we built relationships, friendships, and um, it's the best thing that could have happened to Springfield and Northampton and everything else in between. That's amazing yeah. because, and you know, some of the sort of issues that you just described in terms of, you know, um, women of different communities not really being able to relate to one another, not really being able to have those conversations initially, um, sort of mirrors what happened at the national level, right? Because when the National Women's March movement emerged, initially it was criticized for being led by white straight women mm -hmm. and that their agenda was not really reflected reflective of the concerns of uh, trans women, women of color. Um, so as you were organizing this year's march, what were some of the issues that came up and what, how were you able to sort of overcome those? I think that uh, many of the issues that uh, I think that we came across weren't really big issues because if we didn't like, say, uh, like a picture or the way something looked, we all came together and we all was just like at the same time like, oh, Oh, that was great just like you know our image or our logo and and we wanted to really capture um, unity across communities and we wanted to capture it with our logo when we finally did that which I'm kind of hating on the logo because I wish I would have had it for Springfield Women's Organized <laughs> but it was like the best for Pioneer Valley Women's March that was just like this was meant to happen for us to fight within these next years of 2020 and these next things that are coming along we have to be together to fight this like we are not so divided it's not like some big wall of border between our cities we are all affected in some sort of way and like rachel was saying you know if we don't fight together then apart we're 
gonna lose. Absolutely, and if we yeah. automatically assume Springfield women don't need this, but Northampton women need this, or Belchertown, or Agawam, or East Long Meadow, or Long Meadow, no, we all are affected in some sort of way with laws change of some sort when it comes to women hygiene sure. and, and women environment, self-care, being a mom, being a grandmother, being an independent woman, owning your house, getting a job, going to school, all those things affect us. Doesn't matter if you're a queer woman, a straight woman, as a gender, as a female, the things that are affect us is all commonly. We might face it a little differently, but it's still the same, and we have to fight together across racial lines. Absolutely, and Rachel, I mean, I feel like what Yolanda just described in the process with which you yeah. guys sort of came up with these, you know, just different aspects of the, the march and how to put it together and the coordinating of the logistics and all of those things and the themes, I mean, I feel like you're really modeling, you know, to the National Women's March, how things should be done. Mm -hmm. And my question is like, how, you know, what is that trust built on? Like, did you have previous relationships as activists that you were able to build on as you sort of put together this march? Or, you know, mm -hmm. was there just a lot of sort of openness in terms of learning and not being defensive? So how was that process like for you? Yeah, it's really interesting because we, we really didn't know what was going to happen. There were cer yeah. certain um, threads of people who uh, worked um, on the last year's march in Northampton who were from the Springfield area and Chicopee. Jeanette Rivera is a big, a big uh, component of why we all got together. We have a lot to thank her for. Yes. Um, but we really didn't know what we were going to expect. And what I was really struck by is the focus and the mutual respect right off the bat. Uh, maybe it's the silver lining of such dire times is that uh -huh. people know what's at stake uh -huh. and you know we and so everyone really um, s started off on the right foot I believe mm -hmm. um, and it was love yeah <laughs> maybe that's a good word for yeah it. you know yeah. it was definitely love for the care of what we want and what we see and we all had a like mind to the mm -hmm. love of making this a, a success and so to me it was just like just watching all these powerful women across the table and even bringing in new organizers who have never even organized before but wanted to find a way to to find this niche that they wanted to do and to be able to do that and it's just been amazing and we have like she said this common respect and love and appreciation for what we are doing yeah. and that kills any <laughs> evilness I i've learned the power of good food at meetings we're all like <laughs> yes. what's happening they're bringing out food here in springfield Yay. what they're, they're taking care of themselves <laughs> they have drinks and food and then they're like oh, okay this is good I, I think you guys had a lot of fun in those meetings. Yes. I wish I was at some of them, but yes, yeah. and the food I'm sure was amazing too. Yeah. So, um, guys, <laughs> so you know the National Women's March again. In order to sort of determine what their theme was going to be for this particular year, they actually conducted a poll among their members, among their supporters, to sort of figure out you know what is most important for people right now. And so they came up with immigration, climate action, and also reproductive rights. Um, how? What is the the theme of this year's march here locally and how did you all come to that conclusion in terms of what it should be well well unity across the communities is our theme okay. um, because that's our goal of um, of changing the the location of the march and we hope to rotate the march throughout the valley actually um, and and go to other cities and towns um, to and and in the process um, unite ourselves even Wonderful. more so that with, we're having a focus on climate justice and I think this and, and Yolanda can speak to this really plays out in Springfield mm -hmm. it's climate justice is, is a woman's issue where mm -hmm. women are disproportionately affected by um, the climate emergency and climate crisis and uh, so we really feel like it's kind of a ubiquitous problem mm -hmm. and I'll turn to Yolanda uh, yeah. in terms of like how was this I mean oh, there's so many very dire issues right now that are affecting women, gender-based violence, there's, you know, rep uh, abortion being, you know, legal in like mm -hmm. nine states and stuff. So why climate justice? I think climate justice in so many different levels, even the most simplest things as women forget, even um, dealing with our, you know, hygiene, or mm -hmm. sanitary napkins mm -hmm. once a month that, and if, if some male thinks, oh, let's use recyclable sanitary mm. napkins, and you're saying, well, it's okay because you're not putting that in your genitals, but we're putting it in our area, right, right. and it causes us to have 
we could have cancer, we could have so many different things. Right. So even the most simplest things as you going to the store as a female, and even as a mom or even a dad who's going to be, sh a single dad who's shopping for a daughter who's going to this, because his daughter now just has this time of the month, what are you gonna pick to make sure that your daughter's life mm -hmm. is okay, sure. her organs are okay? And it's just as simple as that, and if we don't think about environment in so many different ways, um, you know, for us in Springfield, we have Bonnie's Island that all of that weather, all of that, it just comes right into Springfield. High asthma or uh, just so many different things that affects us as chronic pain, fibromyalgia, lupus, mm -hmm. Lyme disease, mm -hmm. so many different things that affects women in so many different areas. And not only that, we have to work. We have to take care of the house. We got to take care of the kids. We got to, you know, and it's a recycle and door. If we're sick and we're not using self care, who's taking care of the house if nobody else is taking care of the house or taking care of what we need to take care of? Women health is important. It's mm, it's not absolutely. a made up theme, you know. And it's intricately <laughs> connected to the climate. It's and, intricately connected. And women, I feel like globally, are right now sort of at the forefront of leading this you know, at the mm -hmm. uh, forefront of this yeah. cause, you know, with Greta Thunberg and also like young women here, activists here in our community. So are young women, young people here in our community, sort of are they involved in this, um, in this movement as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, just like, I mean, we call, we call the earth Mother Earth. We don't yes. call it Father Earth. Right, I mean, right. You know. And that's really the connection between even reproductive justice and, and, and the climate crisis is that the same mentality, the connection between patriarchal and white supremacy thinking of exploitation and hierarchy yeah. and, you know, and f using uh, water and air mm -hmm. as free commodities that can be abused. Mm -hmm. It's the same mentality that tells women what they can do and not do with their bodies. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, this is wonderful that we're going to focus on that for this particular march. Um, and how do you both, you know, hope to sort of sustain uh, what is going to be talked about at the march, what we're rallying around with, you know, sort of continued momentum, like uh, over the year? And how will you sort of connect this issue to the larger movement? And is there any other plans for that? Are you going to have an activist fair? Like, how would that work? Like, you know, trying to sort of connect this so that it doesn't just remain confined to this particular day, but that there are communities here that can sort of take this up and continue their work. I don't think we have anything to worry about when it comes to like being able to keep the conversation going. Knowing mm. that from from Pittsfield to here, we have so many women's groups, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody coming to the table and using this round table to make sure that we continue this conversation. The great thing is that women are fired up, mm -hmm. and we have young women of all uh, all ages. I mean, high school, middle school girls stepping up saying, this is Women's Inc., Girls Inc., uh, Women's Fund. I mean, just, there's so many organizations that you just, it's just coming and fueling and they're all coming to the march. So to be able to be on the same page and being able to fight for this and saying, this is what we want to do, but we only could do it together. Right. You know, it starts with a conversation and hopefully ends with a solution. And I think that that's exactly what we're having right now is having the conversations across table lines, across county lines. I mean, having a beautiful woman as a East Hampton mayor and, and everything else coming in between and then Rachel being city council. And then we have two new city councils in the city of Springfield and more women stepping up fighting. And then we have more women wanting to run for Congress. And then you see the way Boston is looking so much more oh, differently, part, part of their city council, our Congress looking differently the things that we are doing we are doing it yeah. absolutely women yeah. are on fire <laughs> I mean we did add the activist fair last year to kind of formally address the issue yeah. of like let's where we go from here yeah but really as we all had to say it's the whole process um, of, of even just playing the march where uh, now I'll get on the phone pretty quick with Yolanda if, if we need to march again pretty fast so um, I think those I think those uh, tracks have been set that mm -hmm. is brilliant. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like the activist fair is also really important because some of yeah. the organizations that you mentioned, you know, their constituencies might know about them, but not everybody does. Right. And when you have, like, you know, those leaders sort of sitting at the table and, you know, sharing information about their work, then people really know which direction they can be involved in if this is something that they also, just lay people who have not really been involved earlier can now, you know, find a way to be more deeply engaged in everything. So that's really Yeah, wonderful. it was very popular last year. It'll be going on all 
all afternoon the day of the march january Excellent. 18th uh, saturday january 18th. wonderful so, yeah. and so ladies we've talked about how you know women are on fire and they absolutely are and there's no stopping us however what do you think is the role of male allies in all of this yeah. i think we have many um Male allies, I think there was like a few that wanted to even talk and uh, yeah. that was like, that was the only disagreement I think we had was like, <laughs> should we let guys talk or yes. they could just march. <laughs> they yeah. could just be there and just support. But talking, we hear enough about that. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, just like our sons, they're our yeah. allies, you know? Awesome. I mean, a boy loves their mom, you know? So they're gonna fight for whatever, you know, mom is fighting for, but we have a lot of allies. What is that ally group? Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot. Well, there's um, Rob Bukun who does the Voicemail magazine. Yes. Very, very He had a very powerful yeah. article as well in Mass Live mm -hmm. I mean, recently. And yes. I, I think his whole message was to just show up. Yes. and march and support and like you don't have to be at the forefront like speaking right but just right. be there as a support for yeah in fact here's a formal invitation for male allies that <laughs> is really powerful for you to show up don't feel awkward about showing up it means so much and i would say the same thing to to white folks especially in the northampton area this is an opportunity this is not, we, we all, you know, I hear a lot about what can we do yeah. as, as allies. Allies is a verb. And you showing up is, this year is like a re, it's really powerful message to the Springfield community. And it's a, an opportunity that's not always there. So I hope everyone will make that, we know, an extra effort, but uh, we're trying to make it as easy as possible. And um, everyone is encouraged. And it means, your presence means a lot. Excellent. So, um, ladies, we don't have too much time left, but what are some final thoughts that you would like to sort of communicate to community members who are watching um, and who would like more information about the march itself? Um, well, we're coming to a town near you, maybe next year, and if you're a women's group who's either in Agawam or somewhere in the Pioneer Valley and you, are in, and you want us to come to your town next year or the year before, uh, the year next, let us know. Reach out to any of us. Uh, yeah. You know, we have Facebook uh, pages, links, websites. So please get involved. And if you want us, to, we want to march wherever you're at. We want to show solidarity wherever you are at. So we're ready to go. Yeah. So you can find out more about today's, uh, t this year's march, January 18th. Um, at PioneerValleyWomensMarch.com. It'll be, we'll be gathering at 11 at Northgate Plaza, leaving uh, the plaza at 12 to march, and then the rally will start after that, probably a little shy of 1, 1 p.m. It's gonna be really exciting. Great speakers and great performers this year. And, yes. what, and is the our, fair. what is our Facebook page? So yeah, P PV Women's March. Oh, that is on yeah. the that's yes. the Facebook page yeah. as well. Great. So I would encourage everybody to just visit the website if you need more information. Um, thank you both so much for being here. It was such a joy to you know just be in your presence and hear about this amazing process that you were both a part of, and we hope we have a wonderful turnout. And I'm sure we will yes. um, uh, on January 18th. Um, and until next time, this is your host Mahlika Sambani.